Um, Lucia Perillo uh, died last year. Um, she had multiple sclerosis, sclerosis for a long time, um, and she was, I think she was only in her 50s. Um, and um, I'm going to read a poem, and then I'm going to talk about it a little. This is Two of the Furies by Lucia Perillo. The old woman in the parking lot wields her walker, not unspryly. Gray hair, lank and without style, hanging under her ski hat, as I wear a ski hat. Her legs bare under her skirt, my legs bare under my skirt. She wears sneakers, I wear sneakers, windbreaker, windbreaker. She rolls up to watch me board as people do because it is interesting to see the wheelchair maneuvered backward into the van. You got it, she asks, as people do, though I am not their child. We are not sisters either, despite the winds ruffling our skirts in sync. Oh, how she is interested in the ruffling of my skirt. The ruffle makes her giddy, starts her bald gums racing on their wordless observations as she peers into my thighs. How alike we are, says this no sister of mine to be argued with, just some crazy old woman flashing the terrible crater of her smile to raise the wind and prove her point. So, um... If you know Lucia Perillo's work, um, I think she's sort of best known as a, a very um, talky, narrative, discursive poet. Um, and this this is a very distilled poem for her, um, but I think it still sounds a lot like her and feels like her sensibility. Um, and this is not a poem I read when I was 12. She hadn't written it when I was 12. And, you know, um, I actually just discovered it last year after reading and liking her very much. Um, I had never read this one before. So, um, but I think I wanted to bring it in partly because I want Lucia's work to be shared and remembered and continue to be read. And also because um, I'm always looking for, well, I was looking for models, obviously, as we all are, for our own work. And I, I would say that I tend to sometimes look at poems as you might look at a painting, um, looking for like how the energies or colors or shapes um, or volumes are sort of posed against other energies, colors, shapes, volumes, um, which sounds kind of crazily abstract for a basically narrative poet. Um, and, but, but I really do sort of experience poems that way um, as how do they use those things to create balance or imbalance. Meanwhile, I'm also always looking for a poem that tells a good story, because that's another thing I like. And um, if a poem does both, I get kind of excited. And, and, and so it, it feels weird to be talking about a poem about this subject matter in that kind of abstract way, but that's part of what I love about it is that it's this intensely moving poem that you can also look at in terms of its, you know, the, it's it the way it, the mirroring that goes on, um, the um, the repetition, the casual feeling that she's just talking, and yet the poem is carefully constructed. Um, the way that. Um, you know, the way that the poem shifts tone as you go along, or the tone is ambiguous, it's affectionate, and it's furious, right? This woman is seeing another woman seeing her. She's perceiving herself through the other woman. And we sort of realize as we go along that it's sort of appalling <coughs> to be in this position if you're in a wheelchair and always having people see you as something, you know, less than human. And at the same time, what interests me about this poem is that she is seeing the other woman that way, too. She is insulting the other woman, essentially, <coughs> as the other woman is essentially is insulting her. So I think, I think I like the ethics and the morality and the way that it, it, <coughs> it both um, performs. It, it, she's performing her own victimization in some way, and I think that's really so interesting. Um, and, and, you know, um, I... This is going to sound humorous, and I guess it's sort of humorous, but I'm very serious, too. I love the way she comes to the end, and she's got a mouth and a vagina, you know, 
staring at each other, the, <laughs> right? The, the, the flashing the terrible creative of her smile as she's peering into Lucia, up Lucia's dress, right? Or the speaker's dress, excuse me. So, I mean, I'm just um, pointing out a few things going on in the, the poem, but I think the main thing I, I want to do is um, show you a terrific poem by a terrific poet um, that moves me very much, and I hope it moves you too, and that you'll go seek out more of her work. <laughs> 